Hi everyone, it's Paul from One Cast One Fish, and today we're going to be talking about the Garmin Force trolling motor, and specifically an issue I've been having where this motor, when I would be turning left or right, it makes a loud creaking or popping noise somewhere in this area of the servo head. Now the creaking and popping noises I've been hearing have been going on for now about two to three weeks. So I figured it was about time to get Garmin's customer service involved. And after a few minutes of talking with Paul from Garmin's customer support, we were able to come to the conclusion that the problem did in fact seem to be these bushings on the servo head of the Garmin Force trolling motor. And that's good news for anyone that's experienced the same problem as I am, as it's a known issue and there's a readily available fix. And it didn't take long, Garmin's customer service had a new bushing kit in the mail. And two days later in the mailbox, I had a brand new set of bushings and the instructions for how to install them in the Garmin Force trolling motor. One thing I want to point out is you'll see that the bushing replacement kit came with more than the required four bushings that we'll be replacing in the Garmin Force trolling motor. And there's good reason for that. You'll notice that when you pull your bushings out of the bag, there's actually a number etched into each bushing. In the A bag, which is the smaller upper bushing, you'll notice that each bushing is marked with a 12 and then another corresponding number, a one, two, or three. And in the B bag, which is our lower, larger bushing, you'll notice that each bushing is marked with a 15, then a dash, one, two, or three. And it's that second number that's gonna be most important to us going forward that one, two, or three, which is actually gonna to correspond to the thickness of the outside wall diameter of each of those bushings, with number one being the thinnest and three being the thickest. Now what that does for us is gives us the option to find the bushing that's gonna give us the tightest possible fit for each application on your trolling motor. Now I know a lot of you are gonna to wanna to go to that number three thick bushing right off the bat, but I'm here to tell you that it may not be the best one for your application, and it might actually be too tight to get the pins back in place. With that said, there probably will be a little bit of trial and error to find out which bushing fits best in your application. Now we're gonna move forward with replacing those bushings on our upper and lower mount for our Garmin Force trolling motor. As I mentioned earlier in the box with the replacement bushings, you'll see that Garmin did send in instructions where you could scan for a video of how to install these new bushings. However, when I did scan that barcode, yeah, nothing happened. So it's gonna be up to me to show you how to put these new bushings in your Garmin Force trolling motor. Our first step is gonna to be to make sure there is no power going to that trolling motor. Since we're gonna be removing the servo head from the main mounting bracket on this trolling motor, I wanna give ourselves as much room as possible, and that's why we're gonna be removing these mounting brackets for our cable runs just so I have a little bit of flexibility and wiggle room. That'll include removal of these cable clamps that hold our power and transducer cable to the mounting frame. And our third and final clip holding those cables in place. And as you can see, that gives us some play in those cables for when we remove this trolling motor servo head. While we're in the process of removing cables, we want to disconnect the power supply to our display. It's kind of hard to see, but it'll be this cable that connects into our display from underneath our trolling motor mounting bracket. Now we're going to place our trolling motor back in the stowed position and get ready to remove the gas spring. Here's our lower gas spring and we're going to remove the two screws holding our mounting glovis into place. And once loose it should lift right off. Now we're going to move our trolling motor back into the deployed position, but remember we disconnected that assist piston and the trolling motor is heavy. Now we'll remove these hex bolts for our upper mount bushings. Now I do want to point out the mounting pin that goes between our main bracket for support and the servo head. Because once we remove this, this upper part of our head will be able to pivot freely on the upper end. With that said, you wanna make sure that the trolling motor is in a secure location, so that way it doesn't swing or do any damage. With everything secure, I'm gonna use a punch here to pop that pin through. And it should only take some light, easy taps. And you can see that pin coming out the other side where we're gonna slowly work that out and remove it. At this point, our mounting bracket's free from the servo head, and you can see that bushing right here that we're gonna be replacing on both sides. Now we're gonna move the trolling motor back toward the stowed position so I can slide this upper bracket out of the way. And you can see once you get to a point in the apex, 
that was able to take and lift right on past. So we're gonna lower that trolling motor back down slowly. And with our mounting bracket up and out of the way, it gives us perfect access to these bushings for replacement. Bushing removal should be pretty simple as so we can just press it from the inside out, then pull it out of there. Our new replacement upper bushings are gonna come from the A bag. And our new bushings are gonna simply press into place. Our next order of business is gonna be removing and disconnecting our other gas spring clothes. And again, we're gonna lift up and off. Now we'll be looking to replace our two lower bushings on both sides. And these are gonna be a little bit trickier. And that's because when we remove this pin, the whole servo unit and trolling motor mount is gonna come loose. And we're gonna to have to support that while we replace the bushings and reinsert the pin. Again, I find that pin easy to remove with a small hammer and a punch. Now we're able to slide that pin right on out. And again, that whole head unit, as you can see, is now loose from our trolling motor mounting bracket. And again, we're gonna press those bushings out with our hands and replace with our new bushings. With our new bushings in place, we're gonna line everything up and reinsert our pin. And that pin should slide right in there, even in flush. At this point, we have new upper and new lower bushings installed. And now it's time to start putting things back together. First, we're gonna remount our upper gas spring. And to do so, we're simply gonna move that clevis back into its mounting area and make sure that our rod goes through its proper hole. And it should slide down and fit right snugly into place just like so. And we'll tighten that back down with the screws. Now we're gonna get our upper mounting bracket here taken care of, but as you'll notice, we have to get this back underneath here. And I'll show you a trick to do that again. What I'm gonna do is carefully lift the trolling motor back into the stowed position so this upper mounting bracket can slide underneath into that servo unit where it needs to go. And once you reach it high enough, it'll slide right on by and you can put everything back here in place. Now I'll be the first to tell you that is not an easy task when you're by yourself, but if you take your time and you're careful, it should go just fine. Now we're gonna line our mounting bracket up and we're gonna slide our pin into place. Again, it shouldn't take any force. And now we'll screw our hex screw in here to keep everything nice and tight on that pin. Now we're gonna get our trolling motor back into the stowed position here. That way there we can mount that other gas spring. And this piston should be easy to remount. We're simply gonna slide it over the hole right here over the rod. Make sure it's mounted in the hole and everything should sit nice and flush. Now we'll put in our screws. With both pistons resecured, I can now mow. Uh. With both pistons now secure, I can take and lower that trolling motor back into the deployed position and reattach all our cabling. And I'm going to start right here with our cable for our display. And our final step is just going to be simply reconnecting all those clips for our power and transducer cables to hold everything here into place. All of our cables and cords are back and secured into place and everything looks nice, tight and tidy. And that'll be it for our upper and lower bushing replacement on the Garmin Force trolling motor. I hope you found this video extremely useful in replacing the bushings in your Garmin Force trolling motor. And as always, if you have any questions, be sure to ask down in the comments section below. And don't leave without hitting that subscribe button and we'll see you next time on the water.